And earlier in the program, we discussed ward remapping and the proposed gas card giveaway by the mayor. We are joined again now by Alder people Gilbert Villegas, Howard Brookins, and Byron Sigcho Lopez. Thanks to the three of you for sticking around. So uh, we know that Mayor Lightfoot today, uh, she spoke about these three proposed casinos during an appearance at the City Club. Here she is. So we must and I'm confident we will get this over the finish line. Obviously, it's Chicago. There's a variety of opinions on everything under the sun. The casino is no different. Um, but I think that um, you know we've been working uh, well with uh, Chairman uh, Tunney and Vice Chair uh, Jason Irvin, who are leading uh, the initiative on behalf of the City Council, um, following their steer on what uh, other information um, they and their colleagues are going to need to be positioned uh, to make a decision. Um, but I think we're making significant progress. Alderman Villegas, uh, Mayor Lightfoot, says that she wants this wrapped up by the summer. Do you think that's a realistic timeline? Well, I think I think that uh, she is right that we have to do something. Uh, I wish that uh, as, as, as a member of this uh, commit casino committee, I would have liked to have seen all five proposals and not just the three. So that way we could have had an opportunity to vet all five uh, instead of just vetting the three. Um, listen, there's there's a revenue that's tied to this that's going to pay for pensions for police and fire. We cannot lose sight of the fact that if we do nothing to capture this revenue, property taxes go up. Uh, and so what we have to do is make sure that we can find an alternative uh, of, uh, I should say not an alternative rather, but find an opportunity to make sure that we can get a consensus on what's the best best location that's gonna increase revenue, create jobs, and, and thus deal with the pension liability that we face right now. Alderman Sicho Lopez, Rust Street Gaming's proposal uh, to place a Rivers Casino in the 78 development would be in your ward, but you've said you cannot support that development. What have your constituents told you about this plan? Well, many of our constituents are concerned around the effects that we'll have in nearby neighborhoods. I mean, we're putting a casino in the middle of uh, uh, neighborhoods like the South Loop, uh, Chinatown, and we're taking very little consideration on the effects that that will have in many occasions. And one of the Chinatown leaders even talk about the Great Wall that is being built right next to the Chinatown community, a thriving Chinatown community, the only Chinatown community in the country that is growing and is also an economic engine for the city. I do think that it's important that we listen to our constituents, that the decision is not based on what's best for the casino operators and their campaign contributions, but what's best for the city of Chicago. And I think that we need to hear to our constituents in terms of public safety, the congestion, the externalities. We have five schools in, pro in close proximity to the 78. Those are considerations that need to be made based on what's best for the neighborhood, based for the city, and not only for those casino operators that keep pushing their agenda. I also agree with Alderman Villegas. I think it would have been good to have every proposal in front of us so we decide uh, and, and based on the location that is based for the city and not for the, uh, for the uh, operators. Now, that said, Alderman, uh, uh, do you think that, you know, Lightfoot wanting to have this wrapped up by summer, do you think that's realistic? I don't know. If, not a thing is only not realistic. I think that it will be inadequate to rush such a big project. I understand that we have constraints in terms of our pensions. We need to honor those pensions that we do have sh shortages in our in our budget. But Mayor Lightfoot should also have an agenda for Springfield so that we can uh, uh, tax those corporations and, and billionaires who now are be benefiting by this casino proposal. I do think that it's important that we take our time, that we don't rush this decision, that we'll have permanent effects on neighborhoods and in our city. And I think it is important that we also talk about other, other ways uh, to balance the budgets, not only uh, this casino proposal that is really putting our communities in a very difficult situation. Alderman Brookins, the state ended its requirement that people uh, wear masks on public transportation. Uh, city and county governments can impose their own rules, but we got word late this afternoon that Metro and CTA are also dropping that mask mandate. Uh, it seems like a bit of whiplash for probably for commuters and passengers here, but do you think this is the right move to drop the mask mandate right now? Well, I, I, I think that there's been a lot of uh, consternation around wearing masks and that it, it, it is probably best for the safety of, of the CTA employees and people who are getting into fights regarding this. I think that people should wear masks uh, uh, when they're in public and they're in tight spaces uh, to protect themselves and to protect others. But at, at some point, we're going to have to drop the mask mandate. It appears that that's the way the country is going now, especially after this latest court ruling out of uh, Florida 
And so I don't think that there's any other choice but to drop it. Now, same question to you, Alderman Villegas, because we know that cases have begun to rise again due to the BA2 uh, sub variant. Is it right to be dropping the mask mandates right now? Well, I think I think that, um, you know, listen, regardless of whether the, the, the mandate is, is dropped or not, um, if you're if you're in a, a crowded area and you feel like you want you want to wear a mask, I think people are going to make that decision. Um, so whether it's required or not, I think that uh, we're getting to a point right now where people are starting to live with COVID, understanding that it's the smart thing to do if you're in a, in, in a congested area, that perhaps you should wear a mask. So I'm, I'm kind of on the fence right now as it relates to the, to, to, to the mask mandate. Uh, but me personally, if I'm, if, when I'm flying on a plane, even though they're, they're uh, dropping that mask mandate, I feel I'm going to wear a mask only because of the fact that historically when I, dri when I flew on a plane, Sometimes I would get sick, and so maybe it's a placebo effect or what, but I'm just going to wear a mask on a plane. It's, it's for two hours, and that's for my safety, and that's my choice. So uh, moving on, documents, uh, court documents around uh, former Alderman Danny Solis' secret deal with federal prosecutors to avoid <laughs> prison time became public last week. Of course, we know that he um, spent years gathering evidence uh, for federal prosecutors in the cases of Alderman Ed Burke and former House Speaker Michael Madigan. Alderman Sigcho Lopez, we've got about 35 seconds left. What is your reaction to this news uh, about your former predecessor? Well, we're going to join what the mayor Lightfoot uh, has said that uh, we're going to uh, have a victim statement at the next court on April 21st. It's inconceivable and unacceptable that an elected official who betrayed the public gets to walk out without any accountability. We're going to make sure that there's justice in the city of Chicago and we got to lead by example. Okay. Alderman Villegas, Brookins, and Sigcho Lopez, thanks to all three of you for joining us. That's where we'll have to leave it. Thanks, thanks for having me.